welcome to the first of my primers focus on the universe of Escape from Tarkov. If you're watching this, you may well be brand new to the addiction, the stress and the joy that you get from the creation of Battle States games, Escape from Tarkov. What is it about and why should you care? Well, until recent times, games have been very bland and lacking any sustained enjoyment of defeating your opponent or even a dislike of them defeating you. You see, within Escape from Tarkov, your gear, weapons, food and medical supplies let you take into a raid matter and losing this too many times in a row or not maintaining your upkeep can cause you, the player, to be affected by your attrition and having to rely on different measures to survive. And on the flip side of completing a raid coming out juiced as fuck after wiping the raid can make you feel like you have a 12 inch cock if you don't have one already, but of course you do. I am going to start the series with the beginning, some history of how Tarkov came to be. With the launch of the North Stream International Gas Line construction, at the orders of the Russian government, a new administrative entity was created. The Norvinsk region located between Leningrad region, Korea, Finland and the Gulf of Finland from the south. All three being one of the smallest regions both in territory and populations, this administrative division became a gateway to Europe and obtained status of the Special Economic Zone. Aimed at active international partnerships and assuring safety of international investments, tax exempts, accumulation of cutting-edge business practices and attention of authorities were meant to make Norvinsk region a very attractive place for joint ventures. Essentially, the project of the Special Economic Zone became the next Skolkovo, through not in science but in financial and industrial economic sector. The life of the region was centered around two compact but very highly modernized cities built over a very short time, Tarkov including the E18 International Highway and Norvinsk with the A123 Highway. Tarkov was intended to become a financial industrial center and was built abundant with various transportation routes, railroads, seaports and convenient road junctions. Norvinsk, on the other hand, mostly hosted executive headquarters and government officials of the Special Economic Zone. Both cities were connected with a comfortable place speedway bridge that connected the bank of one of the Gulf of Finland inlets. Two years ago, Tarkov became the scene of international scandals centered around the operational activities of the local branch of large transatlantic corporation Terror Group, called Terror Group Labs. It was conducting its illegal activities under the guise of official contracts with regional government in agriculture and mining industrial sectors. The investigative authorities have uncovered numerous shadow transactions and corrupt connections of the international corporate representatives with local officials and prominent local business executives. Along with several criminal and administrative suits against high-ranking branch executives of Terror Group, the company gained the utmost attention of Russian Special Services, which has suspected the research conducted by the company and its local subsidiaries of disruptive intentions against Russian national security and strategic interests. For instance, the investigation revealed that Terror Group Labs and its proxy companies show a great deal of interest towards the region's territories that previously belonged to the Ministry of Defence and the host military bases or other special objects. The reason for such attention to former military promises even today stays unknown. It is well known now, however, that after a six-month standoff on the international diplomatic scene, the terror group lab security forces provoked an armed conflict between the Russian interior ministry's troops and the newly introduced to the region UN peacekeeping forces. This, inc this incident led to further escalation of the now over armed conflict involving peacekeepers, interior ministry forces and two private military companies. Most likely this info will never get confirmed, but it is pretty obvious that the Bear private military company was established with involvement of the authorities, if not on their own direct orders. That's possibly the only adequate answer to the emerging threat. In a situation of a de facto occupation of the state part by an international military force, 
the state's own police and the rescue bodies lost the freedom of investigation. Bound by necessity to negotiate with negotiate it with international control and observation groups. The next obvious move for the government would be to declare martial law on the territory. However, since the possible adversaries in this case include some of the leading world powers wielding nuclear weapons, the outcome of an open conflict was predictable as it was unacceptable. Obviously, for at foremost reasons, the main parties actively involved in this conflict up to this day remain the same. Two private military companies, USEC PMC employed by terror group and latently backed up by UN peacekeeper forces, actively interferes with the course of official investigations of the corpor corporation branch activities according to the Russian intelligence agencies. The PMC operatives, besides destroying the evidence and neutralizing witnesses, continue in direct violation of the court's orders to carry, out, carry on with the research of several unassigned objects. The bare PMC operatives, formerly being subcontractors of a regional public organization, essentially conduct targeted local operations aimed at uncovering and delivering to the authorities of direct and indirect evidence implicating terror group of illegal activities. It should be separately noted that according to Russian laws, any enterprise carried out by unofficial armed forces is considered illegal by default. Today, almost two and a half years later since the conflict first emerged, it can be said that the situation looks nothing like a random coincidence of facts and circumstances, and rather reminds a well-planned and carefully prepared military political pro provocation. The question is, however, who and why would want to provoke Russia to undertake drastic measures, and what is the ultimate goal? In the end, the situation in the region today has come to a rather weird stalemate, resembling a puff pastry. The Blue Helmets Peacekeeping Force is officially stationed in the points of the region, but are seldom seen outside their bases. Land border with Finland and other seaboards remain under Russian border control. Basically, the border guard has sealed off all the ways leading to the west. The Gulf is constantly patrolled by the Baltic fleet, the only airport in Norvisk is inoperable and its, air, and its air corridors are covered by anti-air artillery. Land borders are reinforced with interior troops, thus basically making peacekeepers and terror group lab employees guarded by their PMCs or cut off from outside the world. However, due to the UN presence, Russian authorities are unable to forcefully solve the situation. The only chance for a relatively peaceful resolution of the conflict is now in the hands of the Bear PMC provided, of course, that they can find provide to the official government of an irrefutable proof of a strategic threat from the, inter from the international corporation. As for the tactical situation in the region, lately there has been a tendency for a translocation of fire contacts between PMC groups from the outskirts of Tarkov towards the city centre. If we look at the map of current operational situation, we can see the bear group slowly but steadily sealed in the city perimeter while conducting a series of operations at the Prot and blocking the bridge to Novinsk. The bears have nullified the risk of terror group labs personnel or evidence extraction. Moreover, bears have destroyed several warehouses located on the port, terminal premises and belonging to the international company, which stored sealed containers ready for shipping. Contents of the containers is yet unknown to the public. On the opposite side of the city, the bears have discovered and destroyed a covert communication hub set up on the premise of an old sawmill. Furthermore, it was discovered that Terror Group Labs has also purchased a reserve civil defense station that once belonged to Emacom, according to latest reports. This area still remains disputed by the PMCs. Overall, if the bear operatives maintain the gain momentum, they have a good chance of deblocking or even securing one of the key objectives mentioned in the investigation materials of Terror Group case. The former chemical plant 16, the plant industrial estate, was illegally sold to terror group labs as far back as 2009, and investigators were unable to find out the nature of works conducted there before armed conflict broke out. Apparently, it was a site of industrial production or laboratories of some kind, which can serve as a rock solid evidence of terror group labs' illegal enterprise on the Russian Federation soil. It is possible to destroy papers of electronic data 
carriers. It is possible to eliminate work witnesses, but that destroying a lab or a plant without leaving any clue for investigation bodies regarding its purpose whatsoever, it is hard to imagine. Especially now with the equipment evacuation it is impossible due to imposed blockade or sealing of the escape routes. Thus, the situation around Novinsky region armed conflict shows signs of radically changing in the immediate future. And when the investigators, lawyers, polit polit politicians enter the game to replace the gun wooden fighters, the region can even be, at long last, pacified. I decided to try a new take for content as I'm on the break this way from Tarkov, as I'm busy studying as well. But I can still produce little videos for you all to enjoy. Depending how this series goes, I will be adding more videos based on the lore of Tarkov. Remember to leave some comments of what you thought and some feedback. And remember to follow my Twitch and my Twitter. Thank you, thank you guys for watching and see you again soon. All the best. Fontaine.